Nash. Um, so I work for Oracle Labs, and we are working on a project called FastR, which is an alternative implementation of the R uh, programming language. Uh, let me start with the motivation behind this project. So R programming language. So know the distinction here that I will be using. R is the programming language, and GNU R is the reference implementation of that programming language. So uh, R as a programming language is a very interesting programming language with very um, interesting features that I'm sure are useful to all users, but uh, sometimes they complicate uh, the lives of implementers of, of GNU R and they make it quite challenging to implement an alternative implementation of GNU R. But yeah, challenges are good, right? Uh, in the words of uh, Hadley, we can it's hard to ask to make an alternative implementation run all R code in the same way as GNU R. Can you imagine having to re-implement every function base R to be not only faster, but also to have exactly the same documented bugs? Mm -hmm. Louder. OK, OK, yeah. And I will add to it that uh, not only documented bugs, but undocumented bugs or features. It depends on your point of view, right? And that's not a joke, because if the thing is not documented, we don't know if it's a bug or feature. Certain package uses it. And we just have to implement it as well to be compatible. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe you haven't heard of that, but there are uh, alternative implementations, maybe more than you thought. Uh, we'll focus on the one that we're implementing in Oracle Labs, and that's uh, FastR. Now, maybe you might question yourself, um, well, why should I care about all this? Uh, first thing, competition is beneficial, and it's beneficial for end users. Um, uh, second thing. Um, this whole thing could be beneficial to GNU R itself uh, because that would, if, if faster or, or other alternative implementations were used in practice, people would tend to program against the specification, not against the concrete implementation, which is GNU R. And that would make life easier even to uh, core GNU R because uh, then they could do changes in GNU R itself uh, easier. Uh, and also alternative implement implementations, the whole reason for their existence is that they uh, either execute R code faster or they uh, provide some additional features. So let's take a look at FastR. Uh, it's a GNUR compatible implementation uh, uh, based on uh, something called Gravium that I will explain uh, shortly. Uh, it's currently based on uh, R3.4. We will migrate to 3.51 uh, after the conference. Uh, uh, based on R3.4 means that we are reusing the base packages from uh, GNU R, uh, but the, the core of the engine is, uh, is clean room implementation. So it's not like a fork of GNU R, it's a completely different project, but we are reusing parts of GNU R, especially of the standard library. This is all open source and uh, licensed under GPLv3. Uh, so FastR, the, the emphasis is given on uh, the compatibility with GNU R, it's an important thing for us. Uh, to the extent that we emulate the, the, the native interface of, of GNU R, so like package extensions that are using C or Fortran uh, are running on FastR. Uh, we provide some additional uh, R language level features, and because we are based on Gravium, which I will explain shortly, uh, we have some of those advantages, advantages listed here. Uh, with Graal, the, the R code is uh, dynamically cheat compiled, which means that FastR usually executes uh, your code uh, significantly faster uh, than GNU R. It depends on the type of code, of course. Uh, Gravium contains heaps of uh, language agnostic tools that you can use with FastR as well. It's uh, debugging tools, uh, memory inspection tools, CPU sampling, you name it. And also Gravium is a, is a platform for language implementers. There are other languages implemented on top of Gravium uh, because they are all implemented on the top of the same platform. The interoperability between them is easier and more, more efficient. Uh, yeah, so JavaScript, Python will be any JVM language. So I was talking about this Gravium thing. It's uh, basically a, a platform or a framework on top of which you can implement uh, programming languages. Uh, we are implementing FastR on top of this. There is also implementation of Python, Ruby, JavaScript. I'm not going to go into details because we don't have enough time. Uh, I'm just going to mention that there are two uh, versions of Gravium. They are both the same for the end user, uh, like from the API point of view. Uh, the first one uh, that's probably the most important for us here is the, the community edition, which is free for any use and is open source and it's on uh, GitHub. Uh, Fast runs on both versions, needless to say. 
uh, I will be giving a talk about Gravium and about interop between R and Python at 3.50 p.m. in the auditorium if you're interested in more details about this. So let's take a look at FastR now. Uh, talked about four things, and that's the compatibility, faster code execution, tooling, and additional features. So let's take a look at each of them. Uh, GNOIR compatibility. So uh, I've put an informative list of uh, packages here that uh, we support and we can run in, uh, in FastR. Uh, the mostly working packages uh, are mostly working on the FastR. The thing is that we don't pass all the tests that the package authors provide, but those packages are usually well written and the tests are well written and covering a uh, big portion of the package, often uh, very specific corner cases. So even though we don't pass all the tests, often we can run most of the examples that you can find in the wild on the internet. Um, and uh, the fully working packages for those, we pass all the tests that the package authors provided. Uh, I didn't list all the packages, but uh, those packages uh, we, um, those and others packages we explicitly monitor. Uh, we are also running uh, automated tests of all the current packages, but unfortunately the infrastructure is a little bit fragile, so um, I'm not going to report numbers on that because they could be uh, misleading, but uh, yeah, those are sort of samples of like what you can expect from FastR. Uh, one thing that we got asked in the past a lot was uh, the support for, uh, I, I call it a plotting or graphical output because I want to distinguish graphics and grid packages. Um, so this is the architecture of GNUR. Uh, what we, after looking at that and, then, and looking at various packages that do graphics, well, we decided that we would just cut it off right here. And in FastR we just implement the grid package. And, but uh, given that we implement grid package, you can run Lattice and ggplot too on FastR. So that, like, we think that, that those are the important packages. We will implement graphics in the future. Uh, faster code execution. So I've, uh, on, the, on the internet, uh, I found this article by uh, Matthias Morganwall. It, uh, it is doing uh, ray tracing in R. And it, it is interesting because he shows a, a piece of R code. It's over here. Um, and then he goes and says, uh, well, this is just too slow to be used in ray tracing. The thing is that this whole thing uh, in R runs about 20 seconds and it generates the, the shades from one direction and what he wants to do in the article is to generate the shades for all directions. So, um, yeah, it's not fast enough for him. Interesting thing again uh, uh, to note is that it's not a pure R code. There is a call to this uh, function which in fact is uh, a Fortran code. This is the code of this function. So what I've done uh, for this talk is that I rewrote this function to R. So it's Fortran rewritten to R. Note that uh, it's quite good because Fortran has uh, uh, one based index in as far as I remember. So the, the, the conversion is, is rather straightforward. And I run this on GNUR and FastR. So these are the results. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a lower is better uh, chart with execution time. On the left hand side from your point of view uh, is the uh, peak performance. So that's performance after a warm up. On the uh, right hand side is uh, the first, uh, performance of the first iteration. Now know that uh, FastR is really good at uh, long running tasks because it needs a little bit of warm up but after the warm up it can be really good. So as you can see over here, the GNUR running only the R code, so the Fortran routine replaced with R code, runs in about 84 seconds. And the FastR on the enterprise graph runs in 1.5 seconds. So uh, that's something like 60, 60 times faster. Now we can also run the Fortran code, of course. It's uh, slightly slower than R code, which is an interesting thing, right? But there is some overhead uh, calling Fortran from, uh, or any native code from, from FastR. So I mean, I think the conclusion of this is really that we shouldn't be rewriting our R code to RCPP or something like this. We should be rewriting our Fortran code back to R. Right. Uh, to demonstrate the, the compatibility of, of FastR, these two plots are SVG images that I've plotted with FastR and ggplot2. Um, tooling. Um, so Gravian provides some, some tools that are language agnostic. You can use them for any language, including R. So this is uh, this is Visual VM, which is a tool that lets you take a heap dump of a running program. So you can start your program, monitor it with Visual VM, see how much memory it takes. Uh, you can uh, start the garbage collector from this tool. And uh, you can also take a heap dump. And then you can inspect the heap dump uh, with this tool. So for example, here we have some 
double vector with, uh, I can't see it, but I've just created, so you can see here uh, things that are created during the startup as well as your things, so I just created one vector. Uh, it's, it's on the top of the uh, dominates by relations, uh, by uh, retain size. Um, but anyway, if you have uh, problems with memory, you can just take a heap dump and inspect your heap and see what kind of data is there and what might the problem be. Uh, sorry. Uh, we also, uh, Gravium also implements uh, 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 Google Chrome DevTools protocol, so you can start uh, FastR like you would start GNUR because FastR is drop-in replacement for GNUR, uh, except you add uh, a dash dash inspect option to, to R and it will, uh, at the startup it will print out a URL that you just copy paste into, uh, into Chrome and uh, you can start debugging with Chrome DevTools. Uh, additional features, because uh, FASAR is a citizen of the uh, Gravian world, uh, we can interoperate with other uh, languages implemented on top of Gravian. This is an example of interop with uh, JavaScript, uh, but I'll talk more about this again at 3.50 p.m. in the auditorium. Another thing, uh, internally, uh, FASAR, the whole Gravian uh, platform is implemented on top of uh, Java virtual machine. That means that we can do very efficient uh, uh, interop with uh, Java programming language. And this is an example where we uh, take a big integer class from Java, we invoke some methods on top of it, uh, for example, to string. Uh, so this is like uh, our own API for, uh, for interop with uh, Java, but we also uh, provide uh, uh, re-implementation of the R Java package that's uh, from the outside it's the same as R Java but inside it uses this this interop instead of JNI which R Java uses and with this we can uh, be like all this of magnitude is faster than, than GNUR and R Java which is in, in fact not really a, a fair comparison because uh, like R Java on, uh, on GNUR is going to use something called JNI so like everything is going to be a function call and between those function calls that go from, uh, from R to Java there, there has to be some bookkeep bookkeeping done. So it's, uh, it's quite complicated but in the case of FASTAR uh, like this access to this field one for example will be, will be compiled down to just, uh, to just uh, memory read from some offset. So it, it's going to be really, really, really efficient compared to normal R, Java, and GNU R. Uh, another additional feature, because uh, we're implemented on top of Java, uh, and we have, have our own implementation of the grid package, uh, what you can do with FASTAR is that you can use a graphics device that's backed up by this uh, graphics to the object from Java. And that's something that's used, if you build your UI with Java, you might put somewhere a graphics to the object and that's something that you can use for drawing things in Java. What we can do is to use this as a device in R and then you can do any plotting with Lattice, ggplot or anything that uses grid and uh, have it shown on the UI. So this is an example. Uh, I think there's like a, a example shiny appli application that uh, uses this uh, clustering uh, example. So I, I've done the same with Java. So this is like a Java UI built built from Java, you can see the drop boxes and things like that. But once you change anything, then Java kicks in and starts R. And in R, it's just like as a first line, we just say, well, hey, we want to use as a device, we want to use this, this sort of middle of that Java window. And then you carry on with your R code as usual, draw your things, this is I think lattice, but it can be ggplot anything. Uh, yeah, so uh, faster future. Uh, as, I said, as I already said, we have a little bit of problems with startup. That's because we're running on Java and Java doesn't have very, uh, very good startup. But uh, with Gravium, Gravium contains one thing and that's, uh, that's a native image tool. It lets you build a native image, self-contained binary, completely independent of JVM or Java from, from your Gravium language. And if we build that, we get a much faster startup time. We get to about uh, one second which is still slower than, than GNUR, but uh, there are some low-hanging fruits that we would like to address in the future and get to the startup time closer, closer to GNUR. Uh, we would like to implement a graphics package using pure R and using uh, grid. And, uh, well, one of the packages that, well, the only package that we know is really problematic that we can't do at the moment uh, at all is data table and we would like to work on that uh, work on that in the future maybe we will provide our own replacement for data table 
Uh, and yeah, if Arthur in Data Studio would be awesome. If there are people from Data Studio, we're happy, happy to talk. And uh, yeah, this brings us to summary. So FASTER is an alternative R implementation that you should give a shot because it's compatible with GNUR almost. Uh, it runs your code faster. It, you can do interop with it with languages like Python and it provides many additional features. Here are the links. If you have any p feedback, please uh, submit, our, uh, submit an issue for us on uh, GitHub. And uh, remember there's this talk at 3.50 p.m. in the auditorium. Thanks very much. Do we, do we have time? Yeah, yeah if, if there are any. Quest if there are any questions, uh, yeah, please ask. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the question was if uh, FASTAR supports parallel computing. Uh, I, I think I skipped the last slide on this one. Uh, we support uh, parallel package. And we also uh, have our own uh, cluster type, which is called shared, and it doesn't start a new process. It starts a new thread, new Java thread. And uh, the data is not, like with other cluster types, the data is normally serialized to and sent to the new process, but as far as I understand it. But with this, uh, with this cluster, you just share the data like through the memory. It's not copied. It's shared uh, with copy on write semantics. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. Any other question? Uh, yeah, so ideally our aim is that you can use it just as is. Uh, the reality is that sometimes uh, package uh, authors use under, undocumented things or things that we haven't implemented yet. There are some. So like it depends on that. But uh, like ideally we would like to support everything. Great, thank you. Thank you.